الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد then in as much as that on Friday nights we've been seeing that the attendees, those that come on Friday nights, are a mixture of youth and uh, older youth and a couple of elders. And in as much as that we intend to begin the youth classes again on Sundays and Mondays before Salat al Maghrib soon, inshallah. And we want to use Friday evenings from time to time, once every couple of weeks or maybe even on a weekly basis, to take something of benefit from various sources, taking from various writings of the scholars. And what I have with me today, that we're going to start reading from, inshaAllah ta'ala, is a very important advice and nasiha that was written by the great Imam. Uh, Shamsuddin Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr al Zuri al Dimashqi, the great Damascan scholar who died in the 8th century, who is known to us as Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah ta rahimahullah ta'ala. It's called Nasiha to Ibn Qayyim ila Ahadi Ikhwanihi, uh, advice from Ibn Qayyim to one of his brothers, and advice from Ibn Qayyim to one of his brothers. The uh, book is phenomenal and it covers over the topics of the causes of destruction and how people that lead other people into misguidance that they are the reverse opposite where the majority of people they are the reverse opposite of I mean what a leader is according to the religion and much of the book it covers over a number of affairs that are six in number that are required for the salat of a person to become and he qurra to aynihi wa na'imu ruhihi as Ibn Qayyim says that are required a number of matters there are six in number that are required for his salat to become the coolness and satisfaction of his eye and to become the bliss of his soul and these things that are mentioned by Ibn Qayyim that are mu much of the book um, these six things, they are really not just connected to the Salat, but they are, as he mentions, in a number of places, such as in Iratha al Ahfan. He mentions that they are Haqullahi fi ta'a, that they are the rights of Allah Ta'ala as regards every act of obedience, everything that we do in our religion, everything that is part of fulfilling Allah's right or the right of another human being. And that's our whole religion, the Sirat al Mustaqim. Scholars, they say, Sirat al Mustaqim, and he is fulfilling the rights of Allah and the rights of the creation. Quite simply, the whole religion is to know and fulfill the rights of Allah and the rights of the creation. And so, there are six things that, as we are engaged in obedience of Allah, Ta'ala, that are necessary for us to ensure that what we are doing is something of quality. What we are doing is something of quality, something that is not half-hearted. These are six things that occur in the heart of the person. Six things that occur in the heart of a person. And we'll come to that, and that's towards the end of this uh, particular book, as we read through it over the next few weeks, inshallah. Without further ado, I want to begin with the words of Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, this tremendous scholar, his tremendous scholar who wrote very astutely and very meticulously his words were, were well chosen and we're going to try to go word for word and inshallah we'll have it on the projector next week I didn't want to delay the class any longer by trying to transfer it to the uh, necessary account to put it on the wall here um, but inshallah 
and we'll have a text in Arabic for those who want to follow along. Insha'Allah Ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says, Allahu, Allahu al-Mas'ul al-Marju al-Ijabata an an yuhsina ila al-Akhi ala al-Din fi dunya wa al-Akhira. That we ask Allah and hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answers our prayer to show kindness to the brother Ala Uddin, this is the person that he is writing this book to. And he, uh, it says, and he, one of his brothers, and one of his very close companions, Ala Uddin, in this world and in the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him of a benefit to others. And to make him from those that are blessed wherever he may be. And this is where he centers I mean, this point here. How can a person be blessed wherever they are? And how the majority of people don't take advantage of what is necessary to be Mubarak. And he, the rest of the advice really stems off of this statement here. And he is writing an advice to his brother of how he could be of a benefit. Nobody wants to live their whole life and reach the end of their life, their last breath, and realize that they didn't do anything to benefit themselves or anyone else. And so this is a very important advice. This is a community building advice. This is something that is essential for a father, essential for a young person, essential for any, an elder, essential for every person in the community, male or female, young or old. It's very important that each of us understand that we have a role to play. And he says, فَإِنَّ بَرَكَةَ الرَّجُلِ فَإِنَّ بَرَكَةَ الرَّجُلِ تَعْلِيمُهُ لِلْخَيْرِ حَيْثُ حَلَّ وَنُصْحُهُ لِكُلِّ مَنْ مَنْ اجْتَمَعَ بِهِ For verily, the blessing of a person. He says here, the blessing of a man in particular, the blessing of a person is there teaching other people goodness wherever they are and giving advice to every person that they come in contact with and giving advice to every person that they come into contact with this person whom meets this description is a very special person there are very few people like that there are very few people except that they waste the time of those that they come into contact with and that there is very little that they leave behind of good advice for other people. So this is the benefit of a person. The blessing of a person is his teaching good to others and his advising, whether it's about religious affairs or worldly affairs, things connected to being a better Muslim, and he has things connected to any being prosperous in this world and so on and so forth, and advising people with whatever you have to advise people with. Allah Ta'ala Allah exalted be He the Most High. He said, "Ikhbaran an al Masihi alayhi salam," informing us about the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salatu salam. And He said, "Wa jaalani mubarakan aina ma kuntu." That Allah, in mentioning the favors of Allah upon Him, He said, "Allah may me bless wherever I am. Wherever I am, I'm blessed." As the scholars they say, "Al ulama kareeth." And the scholars, people of knowledge, they are like rainwater. Wherever it falls, it brings benefit to every location. And so a person can have a small amount of knowledge and be of a great deal of benefit because where they're at, there's a drought. As the great scholar, the great Ethiopian scholar, Muhammad Aman al Jami, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said that a person can take the rasail of the Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab like Usul, Al Usul al Thalatha, Al Usul al Sitta, Al Qawaid al Arba, the likes of these books, and bring them back, he said, to America or to the West in general. And for the people of that land, they could be like Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, Ta'ala, was for the people of his land. And he, a small amount of knowledge that is well understood and well implemented and well taught be of a great deal of benefit for the people. He said this statement of Isa ibn Maryam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us about and conveyed to us 
that he, meaning Allah, made me bless wherever I am. A mu'alliman al khair. He made me a teacher of good. He made me a person who teaches good. Da'iyan ila Allah, a person who calls and invites other people to Allah. Mudakiran bihi, and who reminds other people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muraghiban fi ta'atihi, a person who encourages other people to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fahada min barakat al rajul. This is from the blessing of a man. Waman khala min hada, faqad khala min al baraka. The person who is missing this. And he is empty of blessing. The person who was void of this, then he is void of blessing. He doesn't have any benefit for others. And the blessing of being in contact with this person and being in their company is lost entirely. And even the blessing of those that regularly come in contact with this person and socialize with this person, their benefit is lost. So it's a, he's a pathogen. He's a social, social contagion. He's spreading any futility from himself to the next person to the next person. So this is something that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from. And it's a very real thing. And he, that his blessing... And he misses out the benefit of his life. And people that come in contact with him, they lose out on the benefit of, the benefit of their life. فَإِنَّهُ يُضِيعُ الْوَقْتَ فِي الْمَاجَارِيَاتِ وَيُفْسِدُ الْقَلْبِ مَاجَارِيَاتِ أي يعني الحديث عما جرى And because this person is going to spend all of his time talking about the latest going on. What's going on? Did you see what Donald Trump said today? Did you see any, what this politician responded to him? Did you see in the news about this actor, this actress? Did you see such and such and such and such? This is the whole conversation of that person. The whole conversation of that person is talking about the latest going on. What's going on? He has a scoop. He has the information about that which has absolutely no benefit. It just doesn't matter. وَيُفْسِدُ الْقَلْبِ And he wastes his time with that which corrupts and ruins the heart. وَكُلُّ آفَةٍ تَدْخُلُ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ فَسَبَبُهَا ضَيَعُ الْوَقْتِ وَفَسَادُ الْقَلْبِ Allah Akbar. Every afa, every flaw and defect and sickness and ailment, everything that's wrong in the life of a person that happens to him, then the cause of all of his problems, or her problems, young or old, comes from wasting time and having corruption in the heart or sickness in the heart. It comes from wasting time and there being something wrong with the function of their heart. Something wrong with the function of their heart. And because it's relevant to the point that Ibn Qayyim is going to make, and something that is found in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet is something that was explained by the Imam in multiple places to the point that he wrote really almost two entire books about the subject matter. Then the functions of the heart, because he, here he says that the, uh, every problem in the life of a person comes from two things, from wasting time and from the heart being in a corrupt state, from wasting time and from the heart being in a corrupt state. Then the functions of the heart the functions of the heart, everything that the heart does, the entire purpose of the heart, what is necessary for the heart to be healthy and alive, or that which will dictate and, and be able to uh, show us whether the heart is sick or dead, and he can be weighed by two or against two things. The first is what the heart knows and understands, and the second is what the heart wants and loves and enjoys. Everything that the heart does goes back to these two things. Al-idraq, al-tasawwur, and the understanding, perceiving, grasping, knowing, these sorts of things. Understanding, knowledge, vision, all these things are similar in meaning. It's the first thing. And the second thing is al-irada, al-irada or al-mahabba, and what a person 
wants what they like, what they love, right? So what the person knows and what they want and what they like. So a person who knows the truth, then they care about what is a benefit for them. You say a person who's in left field, a person who's and he acting in a self-destructive way, you say either this person doesn't know or he doesn't care, right? He doesn't know or he doesn't care, right? So everything goes back to these two things, what the person knows and what the person cares about and loves and wants. Taib. And so that by itself is uh, enormous discussion and what he's going to mention here soon is directly connected to that. فَسَبَبُهَا ضَيَاعُ الْوَقْتِ وَفَسَادُ الْقَلْبِ Every afa تَدْخُلُ عَلَى الْعَبْدِ فَسَبَبُهَا ضَيَاعُ الْوَقْتِ وَفَسَادُ الْقَلْبِ Every destructive, harmful affair that happens to a person is caused by wastage of time, wasting time, and by corruption of the heart. The corruption of the heart comes about by either being ignorant and unaware of the truth, or by knowing the truth and acting contrary to it, not wanting the benefit that comes about as a result of the truth, as a result of what you know, not acting upon your knowledge. And this is something that he's leading into. You know, I'm projecting my punches here, but he's leading into it, he's getting there, right? Every sentence that we read so far is full of benefit. And this is how the writings of Ibn Qayyim were. This is why some of the scholars, they called him the doctor of the hearts. The doctor of the hearts. And in Shaykh Sa'i Fozan, he said, Yani. Yes. He said, the doctor of the hearts was the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Right? He was a doctor of the hearts. You know, but, and he says, and he, in the statement, Fihi ma Fihi, and it's not 100% accurate, but however, and he will, will let it ride, inshallah. The doctor of the hearts, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala is going to give us some medicine here for what's wrong with us, what's wrong with our situations individually, what's wrong with us collectively as a community, living around what we live around, being surrounded by what we're surrounded by. He says rahimahullah ta'ala, so it's two things we just mentioned that cause every problem in a person's life. They are wasting time and his heart being corrupt or sick or so on and so forth, right? Tayyib. He said, وَتَعُودُ بِذَيَعِ حَظِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ And this results, these two things, his wasting his time and his heart being corrupt, this results in his losing out on his portion of reward from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. He, he misses out on that which he wants or should want more than anything else, which is a favorable standing with Allah in the hereafter on the day that he meets Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. وَنُقْصَانِ دَرَجَاتِهِ وَمَنْزِلَتِهِ And Allah And it leads to his having a diminished status A lessened status And standing with Allah تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَانَا وَلِهَذَا وَصَّى بَعْضُ الشُّيُوخِ فَقَالْ اِحْذَرُوا مُخَالَتَتْ اِحْذَرُوا مُخَالَتَتْ مَنْ تُضِيعُ مُخَالَتَتُهُ الْوَقْتِ وَتُفْسِدُ الْقَلْبِ and for this reason, some of the shuyukh, some of the people of knowledge, gave as an advice to their students, ihdaru, and be cautious, be on guard against those people, that by socializing with them, you're interacting with them, ruins, or, uh, and he you wastes your time and ruins your heart. Be careful of socializing and mixing with people that waste your time and destroy your heart or ruin your heart. Because when this happens, when a person's time is wasted and his heart is corrupt, then all of a person's situation comes undone and faratat ala al-abdi umuruhu kulluha all of his life becomes a waste all of his life becomes a waste everything is squandered and lost wa kana miman qala allah fihi and a person who was like this who spent who wasted his time 
wasted his life and then who allowed his heart to remain in a state of sickness and corruption and he becomes from those that Allah warned against when Allah said وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطَى I hear the two things that are the entire cause of the corruption of the heart where a person becomes a poison where they take these two qualities that they have and they inject them in another person as he says that the blessing of a person's life was lost and the blessing of the lives of the people that came into contact with him, with, with him was also lost these two things Allah said speaking to the Nabi وسلم, speaking to his Prophet وسلم, La tuti'a, do not obey or comply with do not agree with, do not cooperate with do not work with, do not uh, obey Man aghfalna qalbahu an dhikrina The person who Whose heart The person whose heart we have made healless of our remembrance So this is the first quality That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has As a punishment Made this person healless of remembering him so The first thing Al ghafla an dhikrillah To be healless That he is healless of the remembrance of Allah And Allah said aghfalna qalbahu We have made him healless Allah said, we, meaning Allah and His greatness, have made him heedless, have made him heedless, meaning that this person showed no interest in what would benefit him, and so Allah left him to what he chose for himself. The cause of guidance and the cause of misguidance entirely is al-iqbalu wa tawalli, the scholars they mentioned. The person who yuqbilu an al-haq wa ya'tani bihi, and who directs himself, focuses himself or herself upon or towards the good. And they show care and attention for the good and they make some type of ishtihad. And those people that struggle and make an effort for guidance and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they take small strides and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings them a very far way by His mercy, tabarak wa ta'ala. The people who are the opposite of that and the people who are mu'ridun and they turn away from the truth. And this tawalli of theirs, this disinterest of theirs, this turning away from the truth. They turn their backs on Allah, they turn their backs on benefit. Allah wa ta'ala, it was from His justice that He left them to what they chose for themselves. That He left them and he, in this condition of theirs, they were disinterested. Allah wa ta'ala, ghaniyun anhum wa anil alameen. Allah is free of need of them and is free of need of the alameen. Pay attention to the wording of the verse. Wala tuti'a. مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Do not comply with or cooperate with the person whose heart we have rendered heedless of our remembrance. The person who has this first quality of الْغَفْلَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And he is heedless, mindless, and he is a person who doesn't care, is unconcerned, forgetful of the dhikr of Allah. The dhikr of Allah meaning the entire religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah. And, he, and the religion and the laws of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوتَ And who followed his desires is the second quality. The first is that he was heedless, that he was unfocused, that he did not have mindfulness of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And the second is that he followed his hawa, he followed his impulses. He followed his impulses. وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوتَ and his affair, therefore, was in a state of disarray. I and mean, he was in a condition where he was lost. And he, his, he lost all benefit out of his life, meaning. He lost all benefit. And he, he squandered his life and his self and his time. وَمَن تَأَمَّلَ حَالَ هَذَا الْخَلْقِ So let's look back at what we said. So, so, as we don't get, so as to not get ahead of ourselves. Two things that bring about every ruin in the life of a person. They are wasting time and the corruption of the heart. The corruption of the heart come about by a corruption of its knowledge and understanding or a corruption of its desire, intention, and what it loves. Tayyib, look at what is mentioned in this verse. These two qualities, al ghafla and dhikrillah, being heedless of the dhikr of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. 
goes back to the first thing, which is a corruption of a person's understanding, right? Instead of focusing on the remembrance of Allah, wa ta'ala, the religion of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Prophet he said, الدُّنْيَ مَلْعُونَةٌ مَلْعُونٌ مَا فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا فِيهَا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا وَاللَّهُ وَالْعَالِمُ وَالْمُتَعَلِّمُ شَارِكَانِ فِي الْأَجْرِ that, the entire, that this world is cursed, far away from any, the vast mercy of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And the mercy of Allah that is specifically for the believers comes as a result of belief. This world is cursed. Everything in it is cursed, except for what is in it of the dhikr of Allah, and what aids and helps a person in the dhikr of Allah. Except what is found within it of the dhikr of Allah, and the remembrance of Allah. The remembrance of Allah is the entire religion. Right? The entire religion. Allah said, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا ذِكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ Indeed, we sent down the dhikr. And indeed, we, Allah says in His greatness, shall safeguard the dhikr. What is the dhikr? A deen, the whole deen. We sent down the religion, Allah said. We're going to safeguard the religion. The entire religion is the dhikr of Allah. So the more a person is disinterested with knowledge, and reviewing knowledge, and spending their time with this affair. Some people, they say today, what we need today is action. I mean, social activism. We need action. It's not the time for, it's the time for action. It's not the time for sitting down and learning. It's the time for action. Acting, what are you going to act upon? Right? You have as much information with you about what to act upon as an empty box. You don't have anything. You just an uh, empty vessel. Al-ina'u yandahu bima fihi. And your vessel can only give what it holds. You want to act upon what? Isn't learning action? Doesn't learning take a lot of effort? Doesn't it take a lot of time? Isn't learning and teaching and reviewing and so on and so forth? By itself, Shaykh Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that it's the most virtuous action for the time in which we live in. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith collected by Bukhari in a book called At-Tariq al-Kabir. It's an authentic hadith. You have to be authentic by Shaykh al-Bani rahimahullah ta'ala. The Prophet وسلم, he said that you are in a time قَلِيلٌ خُطَبَاءُ كَثِيرٌ فُقَهَاءُهُ You are in a time where there are many people who have fiqh of the religion. Fiqh isn't just understanding, it's a fahmun amiq, it's a deep understanding of the religion. You are in a time where there are many people who have a deep understanding of the religion. But there are very few people who run around just talking about the religion. Right? People who run around talking about the religion. And in Khutaba. Law taraka ahadu kum ushra ma'alim faqad hawa a halak. If one of you was to leave off acting upon a tenth of what he knows, he will be destroyed. Wasayati ala nas zamanu. A time is going to come to the people. قَلِيلٌ فُقَهَاؤُهُ كَثِيرٌ خُطَبَاؤُهُ لَوْ عَمِلَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِعُشْرِ مَعَلِمَ فَقَدْ نَجَى لَوْ عَمِلَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِعُشْرِ مَا عَلِمْ فَقَدْ نَجَى There's going to come a time where there are going to be a lot of people who talk about Islam and very few people who really deeply understand Islam. If one of you in that time was to act upon a tenth of what he knows, the first group of people in the early generation, if they were to leave off acting, a tenth, acting on a tenth of what they know, then they will be destroyed. It's a time where the knowledge was widespread. And now it's time to implement. There's no obstacles in our way. But the nature of fitna is that it makes it hard to practice a religion. So what's more important in that time is that the people go back to the source of the problem, which is what? Ignorance. The statement of... Uh, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu found in Bukhari Kitab al Atisam. He told the people during the fitna of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi and the fitna of Ibn al Ash'ath. He said, Ma min amin illa wa ladi ba'dahu sharrun minhu hatta talqa rabbakum samirtu hadha min nabiyikum. There's not a year that passes except the one that comes after it is going to be worse, and that's how it's going to be until you meet Allah. 
Every year is going to be worse and worse and worse. Ibn Mas'ud, he said, there's not a day except that the one that comes after will be worse up until the time that you meet Allah. That's a, it's not a cause for pessimism. It's not a cause for a person to become depressed. We have to look at the, we have to identify the cause of the sickness. What's the cause of the sickness? Ibn Mas'ud, he said, لا أقول رخاء خيرا من رخاء ولا أميرا خيرا من أمير خيرا من أمير ولكن علماءكم وفقهاءكم يذحبون أي يموتون He said I don't say that what this means is that sometimes they're going to be more or less prosperous than other times people are going to be poor and poor and poor right some people were rich and then you know they lost their money and that's why things are bad now and I don't say because this is what people look at, these two things that I mentioned here. And I'll say that some rulers are going to be better or worse than other rulers. Because that's what most people do, they scapegoat their problems, right? And there's a problem, the reason for it is, I don't have the money I need, I can't, you know, I just can't, you know, do what I need because I don't have the money, right? Or, it's the government's fault, right? He said, but why that is, is that the scholars and the learned people amongst you will die and then they will not find anyone who will take their place. There was nobody learning from them to take it to the next group of people, to the next generation. And that's why, that's the cause, that's why things get worse and worse. As the population increases, as the number of Muslims increases, right? You have more people, more problems, less people to solve their problems, less people to answer their questions, so on and so forth. And that causes devastation in the society. All of the benefit on the face of the earth comes about by the dhikr of Allah, by remembering the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the two things mentioned here. وَلَا تُطْعِ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ The first thing was الْغَفْلَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ And the second is اتِّبَعُ الْحَوَى The person following their impulsivity, they're following their impulses, they're following their desires. They may know the truth, but the truth may be inconvenient for them. They may know the truth, but the truth, they may be a stranger when it comes to the truth. So they're afraid. Or the truth may bring about some immediate discomfort for them, or inconvenience for them, and so they act contrary to the truth. And so they act contrary to the truth. These are the two categories of people, the two descriptions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned His Prophet retaining other people, alayhi salatu wa salam, retaining, cooperating and being around these sorts of people. Those sorts of people that they cause you to forget the remembrance of Allah and those sorts of people that are impulsive, that act upon their desires. That is what they act upon is their desires. وَمَن تَأَمَّلَ حَالَ هَذَا الْخَلْقِ وَجَدَهُمْ كُلَّهُمْ إِلَّا أَقَلَ الْقَلِيلِ Ibn Qayyim, he says. Whoever thinks about and contemplates over the situation of the creation of people, he will find that all of them, every last one of them, except for a very, very small minority. مِمَنْ غَفَلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ That they are from those whose hearts are unmindful and forgetful of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who follow their desires, those who follow their impulses and their desires. وَصَارَتْ أُمُورُهُمْ وَمَصَارِحُهُمْ فُرُوتًا And for this reason, all of their affairs and everything that would be of a benefit of them is lost. As Allah says, وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُوتًا And in his affair, everything that will benefit him is lost because of these two qualities. All ruin and all destruction comes from a person's and he heart being ruined by these two qualities. And he becomes a pathogen, he becomes a cancer, he becomes a sickness, and, fit, and, and, and infecting those people that he comes in contact with so that the benefit of his life is lost and the benefit of their life is lost. May Allah forgive us and protect us. A فَرَّتُ فِيمَا يَنْفَعُهُمَ يَعُودُ بِصَلَاحِهِمْ Meaning, that the person's affair, furuta, and he is in a state of loss, meaning that they were negligent. That they were negligent, pertaining that which would benefit them and would bring about correctness and in goodness in their life. And they busied themselves with what would not benefit them. 
بَلْ يَعُودُ بِضَرَرِهِمْ عَاجِلًا وَآجِلًا And they busied themselves with what would bring about harm for them immediately in this world and eventually in the world to come. It's the cause of every afa, every ruin in a person's life came from wasting his time and allowing his heart to stay corrupt. وَهَاُولَا قَدْ أَمَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ رَسُولَهُ أَلَّا يُطِيعَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has ordered his Prophet sallallahu not to obey and cooperate and comply with these sorts of people. These people are the biggest drag on the da'wah, the biggest drag on communities, people who are like that. They are the cause of stagnation and growth. And this is how a family, how a community, how an individual moves forward by correcting his understanding and by wanting what is with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala and taking advantage of his life and his time. Those that are not like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to cooperate with such people. فَطَاعَةُ الرَّسُولُ فَطَاعَةُ الرَّسُولُ لَا تَتِمُّ إِلَّا بِعَدَمِ طَاعَةِ هَؤُلَاء Therefore, the obedience of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cannot be completed in totality except by his not obeying and cooperating with such people. فَإِنَّهُمْ إِنَّمَا يَدْعُونَ إِلَى مَا يُشَاكِلُهُ مِنِ اتِّبَاعِ الْهَوَى وَلَغَفْلَةِ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Because how could he be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he was socializing and being around people who were like that? These people, what their da'wah is, is the opposite of the da'wah of the messengers. And these people, they invite to, in their actions and in their statements, they invite to that which is similar to them, that which resembles them, of those who follow their desires, follow their impulses, and are heedless of the remembrance of Allah, the religion of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. وَالْغَفْلَةُ عَنِ اللَّهِ وَالدَّارُ الْآخِرَةِ مَا تَتَزَوَّجَتْ بِالتِّبَاعِ الْهَوَى تَوَلَّدَ مَا بَيْنَهُمَ كُلُّ شَرْ he says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, a person being unmindful and forgetful of Allah in the hereafter, when that is combined with following desires, when these two things marry each other, he said, when following desires and heedlessness of Allah's remembrance are coupled together, and when they marry each other, then the child that is spawned between them he says what comes what they give what these two things give birth to when they mix together is every evil in this world and the hereafter every evil in this world and the hereafter comes from these two things and frequently you find them coupled together never to separate from each other right they're in it to the end they Married for the long haul. These two things of being heedless of the remembrance of Allah and being a person who acts upon your desires and your whims and your impulses. These two things, they give birth to every evil in this world and the hereafter. And frequently they're found together and they come as a result of each other. وَمَنْ تَأَمَّلَ فَسَادَ أَحْوَالَ الْعَالَمِ عُمُومًا وَخُصُوصًا وَجَدَهُ نَاشِئًا عَنْ هَذَيْنَ الْأَصْلِينَ He said, whoever reflects over and contemplates over the situation of this world on a general level, on a specific level. They look on a broad scale at the whole world and they look at an individual level, person to person, group to group, city to city, country to country. And they look on a, in a broad way and then they look in a specific way at why the world is corrupt, why things are the way they are. وَجَدَهُ نَاشِئًا عَنْ حَذَيْنَ الْأَصْلِينَ And they will find that all problems result and emanate from these two foundations, from these two foundations of being heedless of the remembrance of Allah and following one's desires. فَالْغَفْلَةُ تَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَبَيْنَ تَصَوُّرُ الْحَقِّ وَمَعْرِفَتِهِ وَالْعِلْمِ بِهِ The first thing, heedlessness, being unmindful of Allah's religion, being unmindful of Allah's religion, being heedless, 
interferes between a person and between their grasp of the truth, their conceptualization of the truth, their tasawwur al-haq, and they're being able to conceptualize the truth, perceive the truth as it is, and to have ma'rif and ilm of it, to have any, an awareness and a knowledge and a deep knowledge of it. فَيَكُونُ مِنَ الضَّالِينَ And so such a person, because he doesn't know the truth, because his heelessness has prevented him from learning the truth, he becomes from those people that are dhalin. He is astray. He is astray pertaining his knowledge. وَاتِّبَاعُ الْحَوَى يَصُدُّهُ عَنْ قَصْدِ الْحَقِّ وَإِرَادَتِهِ وَاتِّبَاعِهِ While the second thing, following one's impulses and desires, prevents a person, obstructs a person from wanting the truth to begin with, desiring the truth to begin with. With tiba'ihi and from following the truth once he knows it. فَيَكُونُ مِنَ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِ And this person is from those that are the recipients of the ghadab of Allah. Because they know the truth and they act against the truth. They work against the truth. All of the corruption in this world, it comes from these two things. The first thing, al-ghafla, makes a person ignorant of the truth, makes him from the dhalim. The second thing, the person, even though he may know the truth, and he acts contrary to it, and he follows his desires as the principle that he judges by. And this person is from the maghudubin alayhi. Those people that we ask Allah to make us not like them every time and every rakah in our salah, right? All of the problems in this world comes from these two things. These two things make a person from the maghudub alayhi and the dhalim. From those that the anger of Allah is upon and those that are misguided. وَأَمَلْ مُنْعَمُ عَلَيْهِمْ فَهُمُ الَّذِينَ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمَعْرِفَةُ الْحَقِ عِلْمًا What a good friend Ibn Qayyim was, right? Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala is writing this to a friend of his. Great advice. Every word is very punctual, very important, very well directed. As for those people that are the recipients of the ni'mah of Allah, of the unrestricted blessing of Allah in this world and the hereafter, then they are those that Allah has blessed with a weighty favor to have knowledge of the truth, to have awareness of the truth in their knowledge. Firstly, that they have awareness of the truth in their knowledge. And secondly, that they are compliant with the truth, that they submit to the truth and prefer the truth over everything else in their action. So the person who is heedless of the remembrance of Allah, his heedlessness and unmindfulness and forgetfulness makes him, and he prevents him from learning the truth, from learning the truth and understanding the truth. And the person who is uh, a follower of their desires, and who, when they are confronted with a choice, instead of looking at what Allah has said, what the Prophet ﷺ has said, before they move forward, 
knowing what the religion dictates in the situation, that they just do what they feel is better for them, what is pragmatic, and what is better for their ex immediate situation. And the first category of people, those who and you don't have knowledge because of their heedlessness, are misguided and those that follow their desires without even looking at what the truth dictates in a particular situation. And it's from those that are maghdubun alayhim. The third category of people, those that are the recipients of the blessing of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And they are those who have knowledge of the truth and who comply and submit to the truth, who comply with and submit to the truth and prefer it over all else in their action. These people are those that are truly upon the path of salvation. And those that are besides them are in a path of destruction. For this reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to say nightly and daily a number of times in every raka'ah اِحْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those that you have placed your ni'mah upon Your blessing upon غَيْرَ الْمَغْضُوبِ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَنَ الظَّالِينَ Not those that your anger is upon or those that are astray So every problem in this world it comes from the sources that we mentioned and every blessing in this world and every goodness in this world and every solution for every problem in this world comes by discarding of those qualities and by not wasting your time. فَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ مُذْتَرٌ كُلَّ الْإِثْتِرَارِ إِلَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ عَارِفًا بِمَا يَنْفَعُهُ فِي دِينِهِ وَدُنْيَاهُ He says that the slave of Allah, the worshipper of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ana, is in dire need in every way. He is in dire need of being knowledgeable about what will benefit him in this world and the hereafter. He is in dire need of being knowledgeable at every time, at every moment. He is in dire need of being knowledgeable about what will benefit him in this world and the hereafter. Fi ma'ashihi wa ma'adihi. And in his day to day goings about, going about in his interactions with others, his livelihood, and his ma'ad and his final return to Allah for judgment. And that he is and he is in dire need of being one who gives pre precedence to and preference to and wants what will benefit him. A person is in dire need of being a person who knows what will benefit him in this world and hereafter. As opposed to what? As opposed to being healers. And he is in dire need after that of being a person who gives preference to what will benefit him over what will harm him. Now that he knows the truth and can distinguish between benefit and harm, right and wrong, that he gives preference and precedence to what will benefit him in this world and the hereafter, and that that's what he wants over everything else. While abstaining and staying away from what will harm him. فَبِمَجْمُوعِ هَذَيْنِ يَكُونُ قَدْ حُدِيَ إِلَى الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ When he has these two qualities of knowing what will benefit him in this world and the hereafter and preferring that over everything else, then he will be from those that are guided to the straight path. That is his standard, the litmus test. That is what he has to weigh himself when he reads Surah Al-Fatiha on a daily basis, whether he is from the people that are mun'am alayhim, that they are the recipients of Allah's unrestricted blessing. فَإِنْ فَاتَهُ مَعْرِفَةُ ذَارِكَ سَلَكَ سَبِيلَ الظَّالِينَ And if he doesn't have, if he misses out on learning about and knowing about what will benefit him in this world and the hereafter, then he will follow the path of those that are ظَالِينَ It's the path of who? We heard earlier in the khutbah for those that were here, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ to Adi ibn Hatim al Ta'i, who was a Christian who accepted Islam the day that he accepted Islam, right? Ma yufirruk, ayyufirruka an yuqal Allahu akbar. And what 
keeps you away from Islam? Are you averse from saying and admitting that Allah is greater than everything? هَلْ تَعْلَمُ شَيْءًا أَكْبَرُ مِنَ اللَّهِ Do you know of anything that's greater than Allah? He said, no. وَأَنَا حَنِيفٌ مُسْلِمٌ And now I've accepted Islam. I'm a Hanif and I'm a Muslim. What the Prophet ﷺ said to him, he said, he said, فَإِنَّ الْيَهُودِ مَغْضُوبٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالنَّصَارَ ذُلَّالٌ as soon as he accepted Islam, he said them, what you need to know is that the Yahud are the recipients of the anger of Allah. Why? Because they know the truth, but they don't want it. They know the truth, but they don't want it. They don't want to act upon it. They make the principle that they act upon, al hawa. And the Nasara of Dulal, they are astray in their knowledge. They don't know the truth, they may have good intentions, but the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Right? You may have good intentions. You see them coming to our masajid. You see them going throughout the neighborhoods. You see them giving da'wah to Muslims to Christianity. You see them open up food pantries, orphanages, schools, hospitals, spending millions, billions of dollars all across the world to spread what they say is the good word. Right? Juhala, dhullab. They act upon ignorance, acting upon pure ignorance. And so it doesn't matter what their intention is. They have, they may have some of them, they may have good intentions, but it doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. Kamin muridin in khayrin lam yusibhu. As Ibn Mas'ud, he said about the khawaj, how many people wanted the good but never reached it? It's not enough just to want the good, you have to follow the path of the goodness. You have to follow the methodology that leads you to the evidence for the goodness so that you can identify between right and wrong, beneficial, uh, benefit and harm, and so on and so forth. To close this section, he says, وَإِن فَاتَهُ قَصْدُهُ وَاتِّبَعُهُ سَلَكَ سَبِيلَ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ So if the person misses out, wastes, he does what? فَاتَهُ a ضَيَّعَ وَقْتَهُ and if he misses out on the opportunity, meaning if he wasted his time in learning about the truth, and he wasted, out on, wasted on the opportunity to learn about the truth, then he's on the path of those that are astray. He's similar to the Christians, right? And if he misses out, if he wastes the opportunity, misses out on wanting the truth and following the truth, once he knows it, and he follows the path of those people that the anger of Allah is upon, the way of the Jews. The way of the Jews. وَبِهَذَا يُعْرَفُ قَدْرُ هَذَا الدُّعَاءِ الْعَظِيمِ وَشِدَّةُ الْحَاجَةِ إِلَيْهِ So once you understand this and you will understand the great status of this tremendous dua that we make every time we recite the Fatiha that Allah has obligated upon us and the great need that we have to make this dua وَتَوَقُّفُ سَعَادَةِ الدُّنْيَ وَالْآخِرَةِ عَلَيْهِ And how all happiness and success in this world and the hereafter is dependent upon understanding this dua. فَالْعَبْدُ مُفْتَقِرٌ إِلَى الْحِدَايَةِ فِي كُلِّ لَحْظَةٍ وَالنَّفَسِ فِي جَمِيعِ مَا يَأْتِهِ وَيَضَرُحْ فَإِنَّهُ بَيْنَ أُمُورٍ لَا يَنْفَكُ عَنْهَا For verily, the human being, the slave of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, is in dire need of guidance at every moment and with every breath that they take and all that they do and all that they choose to not do, all that they choose not to do. A person finds himself in a number of scenarios where he applies these two things and he his knowledge of the truth and his desire and preference of the truth. He finds himself in a number of scenarios and then that's what he goes into, and we'll read that next week, inshallah ta'ala. And he, ten types of situations a person finds herself in. Uh, everything in the life of a person is one of these, at any given moment is one of these ten things. One of these ten things and how this plays out. It sounds complicated, but it's really not. Barakallahu feekum. Right? Don't get discouraged. Ten things. <laughs> you know, alhamdulillah, it's beneficial. Barakallahu feekum. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon the great Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah Ta'ala to safeguard us and our family and our children 
upon Islam wherever we are in his earth. Hadhu wa sallallahu wa sallam. Mubarak ala nabiyyuna Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.